Dwayne here, Phoenix Typewriter dot com. Got an Adler typewriter. Haven't seen this style typewriter in twenty years or more. It is the ball type typewriter that they made during the seventies. This is an SE one thousand, so it's not the correcting version that they made later. <clears throat> it's also single pitch. Um, it's got just one scale here on the lid. They made a dual pitch correcting machine after this. This is kind of like the Selectric 1 in comparison to the IBM. This came first and then they modified it kind of like they did the Selectric 1. This does have a you know single element right here. It looks like this ball right there. Pretty uh, Pretty different than the IBM. Get this camera to focus here a little bit. And uh, it doesn't have teeth on the bottom. It's got these teeth inside the ring here. And it's held on by a, a little latch right here. This little thing rocks up and then the ball comes off like that. And uh, kind of lines up the same way. It's got a little arrow here on the front. It lines up the same way. So let's take this thing for a test run. I have completely serviced it. It's a survivor. Had a couple problems, but I got them all fixed. It's got paper inject over here on this side right here, this big handle. So you just stick this paper in and pull it through. Pulls the paper bale out of the way at the same time. Pretty slick. Turn this bugger on. And away she goes. Set over there. But let's take this thing out of the cover here because we want to take a look at this. This cover opens up with these little buttons right here on both sides and it rocks open like that. But uh, let's just go ahead and take this out of the cover so we can take a good look at this machine while I've got it because I don't want to run across these very often. This piece has to come off here so. Let me get a screwdriver and unscrew this piece right here. This little handle's got to come off. Alright. So that will come off pretty slick. There we go. Okay, let's put that screw back in there. I'll lose it. There we go. Okay, so I'll paper out. Platen's got to come out. I'll flip this over and it's got quick release, kind of like this Electrix. It's got a thumb thing here and a thumb on the other side, and this comes right on out, just like that. A couple screws right here, both sides, one there and one on the other side, which I already have loose. We've got to flip the margins over like Selectric. It's similar to Selectric, but it's definitely not an IBM Selectric. <clears throat> Okay, so let's get this off here. I have the screws loose already. All right, come on. It's got to get by these levers. There we go. Let me get this under the camera here. Get this off. Okay. All right. So, let me put the platen roller back in here. It just clicks back in real slick. Just like that. And I, it's got a four mounts down here. One, two, three, and four. This one's got these screws that held it in. Like just a standard screw, but the uh, the correcting version later had clips that would clip, clip it in and it would come out. So let me flip this on its back. This is a heavy, heavy machine. It's probably heavier than this electric, so <clears throat> let's see if I can get this thing flipped up like this there we go and oh get the bottom off like that <clears throat> there we go put this somewhere right. that's not for that so let me put this back down so we can look at it all right that is a Monster of a machine. Put the 
margins down, turn it on, return. When it first got it, one of the balls was all clogged up. Even the letters were all clogged up, but clean that, got that fixed. The problem with this, when I first got it, it did not work at all. It wouldn't space. It did come on, but it turns out these racks right here, and I know what these are. This is escapement trip rack right here. It makes the carrier move. And then behind there is another one right here. It's hard to see it there. But that's a tab rack. Both those racks, both those bars here, were on the wrong side of this carrier. As it goes in the carrier here, they were, it's kind of hard to, well, it's almost impossible to see. This piece right here, everything was forced on the other side of that bar. Same thing with the back one. It had me really confused at first. But I did figure it out. It must have happened um, <clears throat> like like I got jarred or dropped or something. But I don't see any other damage in respects to a droppage. But let's look at this uh, ribbon mechanism. Put this paper here. So this has a ribbon cartridge that comes out with that red lever. And it's got these spools that get attached, and then this gets re-put in there. And uh, this accepts a fabric ribbon, a carbon ribbon, and a long-life mylar-type ribbon. And that's what the carrier looks like right here. It does not have a... It's got a rotate band, like the selectric right here, that turns the ball. You can see it turn the ball a little bit there. But the tilt does not have a, a, a band like this, a, a tape. It's a, this rod right here. This actually turns. It's this rod, yes. This rod runs the whole... There's two, two big rods on this machine. So this one runs the ball. So it turns all the way around and makes the ball strike. This one just pivots a little bit this way and that way and controls the tilt part of the ball, like this part, like that. And uh, so it's completely different than a Selectric. The bell is fixed to the uh, carrier right here. Got impression control right here. And this is for when you have a fabric ribbon in here, you can use black, red, or stencil. It doesn't do anything when the uh, carbon ribbon is in there. It has a mechanism and knows that it's not a carbon ribbon so but this thing works pretty slick now um, over here on the side let's get to this side a little bit is the rotate arm right here and this moves for rotate this piece of course is the cycles all the way around when you hit this when you strike your character and uh Let's see what else. On off switches over here. These things used to break. This plastic housing would break. This one is good. Thankfully. There's a way to modify that. Let's go back over on this side. Take a look. So it's got a belt over here. That runs the cycle. Or the shaft here. Turns it all the way around. And if you're not careful, this machine will bite you. Right here is the tilt mechanism right here. And that runs that one shaft. Get to move in here a little bit. Pretty neat. What's really funny about this... Well, I guess not too funny. This is the uh, rotate, so it moves to select. And then the other side is a shift, kind of like the selectric. So this would be the shift. So you move that very quiet shift mechanism. Let's flip this thing on its back and take a look at the bottom here. The thing I had to fix right away on it was this cork return clutch right here. It wouldn't return at all. And 
what I did was went in there some sandpaper and I sanded a new I sanded the old uh, cork, cork down a little bit get a little better grip but it wasn't enough so there's a way to adjust this up here right the spring right here has an adjustment to uh, tighten the tension on that return clutch that worked and the return is working over here it's got a tab decelerator right here so if you hit tab it's got these centrifugal uh, deals right here that spin let me see if I can move this back and then when you hit tab it does a no, it's not tab where's tab there we go. it does a centrifugal thing it's pretty neat so that's a tab decelerator under here is a power roller a big rubber roller right here running the whole thing all the way across it runs various cams like your backspace space bar let's see where the space bar is on this thing let's see if I can return this that's not a space bar but backspace over here so let's Backspace and return maybe. Return is the same as the backspace. I don't know what this one does here. Probably tab maybe. Let's see if I get this trigger. Well, that's shift. Was, this is the main contact point, um, kind of like the cycle clutch of the paddler. Selection is done with all these latches here. These things trigger depending on the interposer picked on both sides. This guy one's on this side, and that runs this big, this big. I don't know. I can't remember the terminology for this, but. It runs this big rocker thing that selects, does a rotation. It is really quite the machine. So depending on which one of these gets picked, it blocks this mechanism from moving and then selects the right character. And it does it very fast. It's as fast as an IBM selector, for sure. Shift um, does it both, you know, I don't know if one side of these is rotate, one side is tilt, but it does it, it, does it on both sides. The trouble we used to have with these is they, they would get sticky way back in the day, and they'd stick, they had to be perfectly dry, no oil. These latches have to be dry. Shift clutches up here, it runs off a little band right here. So it has a, a clutch and a band. Motor is not a centrifugal clutch motor down here. It's a capacitor start motor. So it doesn't have a clutch here. It's just direct drive belt. Alright, what else do we got to show off on this thing? This is like the drum like the IBM has. As the tab and return cords. Let's see if I can get this to move over. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Pretty neat machine. It's pretty, pretty quiet, actually. I mean, it's on. It's not making too much noise at all. <clears throat> Flip this thing down. Huh. Not really sure what this piece does. That's an interesting machine. I kind of forgot a lot of things about these. So it's got set and clear. It's got a tab rack back here. You can see it move back there with this button. So it sets tabs all along there. And I think that's uh, might be about it for show and tell. The thing about this ribbon is they changed it. 
the correcting machine that came out later used a cartridge like this. And this would snap on there. It's electric 2 cartridge. Same thing. They modified their second version to use this cartridge. And it also had a correction ribbon, which this one doesn't because it's not, I'm not a correcting version. But something I noticed about this ribbon was uh, it's complicated. In fact, it's so complicated, they quit using it. But in the book, which this machine's got the book here, this book isn't that big. It's only a 10, 12 page book right there. Half of the book is dedicated to the ribbon. So there's the halfway point, and there's the ribbon, and the ribbon. Next page is the ribbon, and the ribbon. Next page is the ribbon, and then the ball. But there's five pages dedicated just to that ribbon cartridge and how to deal with it. Of course, it does take three different kinds of ribbon, so I guess needed some instructions on that. All right, this is our quick little video of... I was almost called this a selectric. This is the Adler SE1000. And a uh, pretty slick machine. Let me put the ribbon on and do some typing here real quick. So this ribbon latches on with this red lever. This is your uh, carbon versus mylar button. And... Uh, <coughs> Spacing up here somewhere. There we go. Pretty neat machine. And I had, like I said, I haven't even thought about this machine in 20 years. It's been an awful long time since I worked on any of these. actually can't believe this machine is working so good and cleaned up to near perfect state. Pretty neat. Pretty neat iconic machine. Not as iconic as this electric, but close enough. I think that's about all the details. It's got an ABC lever up here, copy control lever. Same thing as this electric, so it's tilting the whole roller. This whole frame is moving. Pretty soon you see the whole frame move on this side. It goes up and down. Just brings the platen closer to the ball. I don't think there's anything in the back here to look at. Um, some basic tension things for the feed rollers. Motor down here. Capacitor and motor is pretty simple on this machine. And uh, paper pan is all that. It's pretty easy on this. Comes out pan comes out and the rollers come out one big chunk like that. Rollers look perfect. Platen looks perfect. I cannot believe this thing did not just deteriorate in 30 years or 40 years. Slick. can't believe this thing is working so good. Alright, that's the Adler 1000. SE1000, Phoenix typewriter, good day.